Supply, demand and prices are very important. They affect most aspects of our lives every day. And in turn, how we respond to these forces influences their future patterns. Now, it says here that supply and demand are fundamental to economic analysis and among the most important tools that economists use to understand the world. It's a bit like learning to ride a bike. You get on, buckle up, try to find your balance, push off, pedal away and hope for the best. You might fall off, but if you do, you just try again. You learn by doing it. First a short distance, and then, as you get into it, faster, further, and you might find it becomes quite a thrill. If you ask an economist what causes a change in the price of a product, he or she will probably answer that it's the forces of supply and demand, and follow this with a discussion of what lies behind these forces and how the relationship between supply and demand determines the price of that product. During the discussion, just to make sure you understand what's being said, the economist might start drawing demand and supply curves. If you're not careful, he or she might also start using equations and symbols, even mathematics. In other words, to think like an economist, you must think demand and supply. But let's forget about the graphs and formulae for the moment. This is not so much about learning words and memorizing formulae, but more about remembering that economics is common sense. And you all have some understanding of it already through your everyday experiences as a consumer. All this series aims to do is give you tools to organize and complete your knowledge of the economic world you live in. You'll be challenged to analyze what you experience, to investigate what you see and what you're told. If you work with these tools and try to apply them to the shifting economics in your life, you'll start to develop the patterns of critical thought that suddenly make economics seem logical. Now, resist any urge to just try to memorize everything. The truth is that if you apply the theory to your own life, you'll find economics simpler, more enjoyable, easier to pass, and more relevant. You'll start to really see how it all works. Things like understanding that behind every price, whether it's the price for cheese or a hamburger or petrol, medical services, electricity, education, you will find the forces of demand and supply. So relate these concepts like demand and supply and the theories they support to your experiences as a consumer in the real world and you will start to see that economics is simple and logical. If you remind yourself to apply the theory to your own life and experiences instead of just trying to learn it all word for word, you'll find it all more relevant and easier to understand. The next time you're at the supermarket, watch what people do when they decide whether or not to buy a product. They'll usually look at the price, and this is often the most important factor in their decision to buy the good or not. An important thing has happened here. The market has decided who gets the product and who doesn't. A type of rationing has occurred, and the economic problem of what to produce and for whom to produce has been answered. So, what problem am I talking about? Why is it necessary for things to be rationed? Well, unfortunately, there is not an unlimited supply of most of the goods we want on a daily basis. It's just an inconvenient fact of life that most of the things we want are scarce goods. Scarce goods are desirable products that are only available in limited quantities, such as meat, chocolates, magazines, milk, cool drinks, medical care, and so on. To obtain any of these scarce goods, you have to pay the going price for them. Now, if you're unable or unwilling to pay, you cannot have the good. You're excluded from obtaining the benefit of using it. Now, this might seem unfair. Indeed, it's tough for people with limited means to fulfill many of their consumer needs. So, 
Why subject ourselves to this harsh and seemingly unfair system? Well, simply because the alternatives seem even worse. For instance, we could decide to distribute these scarce products randomly, perhaps dropping them all from aeroplanes. But what happens then? Well, some people might get what they want, others will get something they don't need, and some are still left with nothing. So, not a very fair or efficient system either. We could try to distribute goods on a first-come, first-served basis. This inevitably leads to queuing, which is always inefficient. General frustration, short tempers, fighting, and sooner or later, corruption and bribery. And you still end up with some people getting something and others getting nothing. Even if you're able to solve the problem of who gets what without using prices as a rationing mechanism, you're still left with the question of who's going to produce these goods and how will they do it. We'll look at this further when we get to the supply side of the market. So, to understand prices, we study supply and demand. And by doing this, we begin to understand the functioning of the whole market system.